he feeds and waters them. Some of the cats allow us to pet them. Um, in the room just to your right, we have our FIV positive cat who's being treated for eye ulcers right now with medication. So there's, a, there's just quite a lot of a mix of medical and behavioral issues with these guys that don't allow them to live um, other than, than here or in some other sanctuary. We have a very thriving pet industry. We go to zoos and aquariums. We name our sports teams after animals. And in other parts of the world, people relate differently to animals, but it's all a very connected and immersive experience. So the fun part of this book for me was immersing myself in the scientific and the religious literature to think about the evolutionary, the religious, uh, the cultural history of being with animals. And while I did that, it also brought together my personal life and my professional life. Big orange. A big orange won't let me get but so close after years and years and years. Right, baby? Give me some No. For thousands, and in some cases millions of years, we've surrounded ourselves with animals. And we carry this history and prehistory with us. For example, in Chauvet Cave in France at 35,000 years ago, there's a buffalo woman hybrid image, on part woman, part buffalo. People also painted other half animal, half human figures. I mean, there's something going on here that's more than just we eat animals or we're prey or we're predators. People are thinking symbolically and feeling symbolically about animals. And I think, not in a simple way, but in a complex way, we carry that with us. And we were created with animals. We are animals. And that there's a sense of that when we relate to other animals. Who is looking at you? And we're hoping that we can find him a good farm or barn situation. Animals, too, have rich emotional lives, many of them, not all of them. I write about apes, elephants, whales, buffalo, um, tortoises. And because they have the capacity for rich emotional connection, many times, not always, they connect with us and change us. So there's transformation, there's attunement. And the other part of that is sometimes animals are indifferent to us. I had mentioned uh, buffalo in Yellowstone, and my husband and I enjoy going to Yellowstone to look at the wildlife. And I feel a sense of transformation and even transcendence when I'm there. Um, it's beautiful animals, and I feel very moved, but I think they're quite indifferent to my presence, and that is an amazing experience too. They've had a hard life, and they don't have a particular reason to want to be in, in the human world. Well, I went to the Cathedral of St. John the Divine with my family uh, two years ago now in Manhattan to watch people bring their animals into this cathedral, the largest in North America, beautiful place, to receive blessings. And the, you know, the, as I describe in the book, the first animal to come through the doors on that Sunday was a large camel striding down the aisle to be blessed. So my intersection here with religiosity is to suggest that we are so immersed in animals' lives that we want to experience the religious through animals. And again, this really manifests in radically different ways. For some people, it's very secular. For some people, it's very spiritual. So I don't want to push the spirituality angle onto any given individual, but simply to say that at the society level, at the pattern level, we do see meaning, make, ma meaning making with animals and religion. This has two stories, so the cats can go in and feed up along the bottom, and they can go up into a kind of loft area and be very protected from the elements. We are just at the, the dawn and the verge of understanding animal emotion, animal intelligence, and animal behavior, and there's a lot more to do. Um, the, Animals that I, you know, in my career have surrounded myself with the great apes, chimpanzees, gorillas, bonobos, we all know they're dying out. We don't have time to reflect intellectually and decide if we want to get immersed with these animals. We have to do it now or in 20 or 30 years we simply will not have wild apes. Animals are hot right now in the academy intellectually. There are questions about animal-human relationship, new journals, post-humanism, and this is all wonderful and it's all energizing. But to me, it's only meaningful and energizing if it's connected to the environmental activist piece. Move the turtle out of the road. Take the dog to you know, a, a farm in a home where it can live. Um, help the injured bird. Find a wildlife rehabilitator. Become one. Send money to help apes with bushmeat. Whatever you can do, it's a piece. 
we joke sometimes that we, we knew we were in this really deep when uh, friends knocked on our door with um, like hundreds of pounds of cat food and said they were making a donation. Um, but we're fortunate that we are able to do this. Um, we are working at the level that we can manage. Uh, we wish we could do more.